the Immaculate Reception. December 23rd, 1972. Three Rivers Stadium in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Last chance for the Steelers. The AFC Divisional Playoff game between the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Oakland Raiders. Christmas would come early for Steelers fans. Harris has it. And he's over. Steelers running back James Conner recreates the Franco Harris immaculate reception. There's a lot of controversy about whether or not he caught it. What do you think? I don't buy into that. He caught the ball. Man, he scored. We got, we got six points for it. <laughs> With no visual evidence of whether or not Franco actually caught the ball, Pittsburgh has provided their own visual evidence. You walk into the Pittsburgh airport, you know, you see a statue there, and then obviously, you know, just the great history of Steelers running backs. And uh, there's still awareness on this play. I don't think that play will ever happen again, you <laughs> yes, know? Sir. You're on your left leg? Yeah, head up, perfect. That's perfect. He comes around quite a bit, actually, and uh, man always has some words of advice for me and, and encouragement. So, you know, he said the standard here, the standard is the standard. Uh, let's do one more. Ball's in the left, and you give him the sti a stiff arm with the right. Head up, eyes up, just like that. In 100 years, what do you want your snapshot to be? Hopefully I have a big play in the Super Bowl, um, and then obviously raising the Super Bowl trophy. That's the only thing it's about. That's why we play this game. Look, nobody's 100% sure whether or not he caught the ball, and that includes you. you got to admit it. That's true. When I, th when I got scrambled out and threw the football, all I saw was a black jersey going across the middle. I gunned it with that quick release. I had <laughs> just like that. Down under the pile I went, heard the roar of the crowd, said to myself, TB, you son of a gun. You put it on the mark. That is a touchdown roar. You're a hero to me. Endorsements will be coming in like did crazy. You call, did you but, call the play? Of course I did, Howie. I called all my plays. Anyway, we all ended up. Four of them. I just did I just right or left. I just didn't know what happened. Who touched it, who caught it, how he caught it. The rest is strange to me. Well, and the reason how he, nobody knows is because they didn't have replay back then. They couldn't look at it again. <laughs> They well, had a guess. They didn't have replay, but <laughs> go they ahead. decided to get down to the dugout <laughs> and do what for 15 minutes? Got Who'd the they call? Somebody. Mysteriously, they're worried about the health of the officials, of the visiting team, et cetera. And then you fast <laughs> forward to the Raiders versus New England and the tuck rule. You say, there's a pattern Years later, here. You're saying, there's a pattern <laughs> yeah. here, yeah. you know? I mean, I'm not a grassy knoll guy. And Franco's an honest guy. Yeah. I love yeah. Franco. He won't tell you. But come on. <laughs> Bro, Maybe Franco that. doesn't know either, you know? Hey, look, that started your Super Bowl dynasty. You right. won four Super Bowls. You played in three Super Bowls and won all three, but you actually worked in four? Yeah, well, the first Super Bowl I went to was Super Bowl 22 down in San Diego, Washington, and, and Denver, and I was security. I was wearing one of those yellow event staff jackets, and I found me a nice little perch where I could watch the game. That's the only reason I went. I was getting paid 20 bucks for security. And about third quarter, I've got somebody running down, and they're saying, hey, you know, there's a, there's a fight up here in Section 101. And I said, man, you better go get somebody else from, from security because I'm not watching this game. You weren't the tough guy everybody thought you were. Uh, <laughs> no, hey, not back then. Great memory. 